Hello everybody, my name is Stephanie Kwan and this is my capstone project on how gender inequity is represented in male-dominated activities. So this video is split into three parts. The first part is music, the second is martial arts, and the last part is a combination of both. I have conducted interviews on people that I know from both of these fields of music and martial arts just to see their experience and stuff. I chose to do this topic because I'm heavily involved in both music and martial arts. They are both passions of mine and I've faced challenges in both of these fields and I just wanted to see you know other people's opinions, other people's experiences, things that they've seen. In history, gender inequity has been a huge, huge issue as we know, and although it has gone much better um, throughout the years, there still has to be a lot of change that has to be made. In the United States, only 6.5% of women work full-time in male-dominated occupations in 2020, according to Catalyst.org. While segregated activities are on the decline, stereotypes still persist, and this is what I wanted to focus my presentation on today. And I hope you enjoy my presentation and learn something out of it. So tell us your name and where you're from. My name is Jillian Bowles and I'm from Huntsville, Alabama. My name is Laura Orzahoski and I'm originally from Philadelphia. My name is Kelsey and I'm from Vancouver. My name is Ellen Marple and I live in Vancouver, BC. What instruments do you play? I play trombone as my main instrument. Uh, I play trombone and piano. I play the double bass. I primarily play trombone. There's some other brass instruments that I don't do well. And what do you do? I'm in high school. I'm about to start my senior year, so I'm class of 2023. Uh, I attend Temple University for jazz performance uh, with my concentration in trombone. I go to the University of Ottawa and I just finished my second year. I'm a professional trombonist and a teacher. Have you ever experienced or seen gender inequity in a music setting? Whenever I do like online stuff, it would be mostly male participants, male faculty, celebrated male bassists getting recognition and stuff. Mostly in rehearsals, whenever I've done things like honor bands, I've always noticed the guys always make friends with each other and then they just don't talk to me. And so I've had to sort of fight my way into that because they're making connections with people from other schools and sort of leaving me behind. I've made friends with some of them. It's definitely been more difficult. Sometimes they only wanted to be friends with me because they wanted to date me or something. I um, was one of the only girls in my section, uh, the band, period. It kind of started with like the way I looked, like people made a lot of comments about my breasts. I got called the B word a lot. Has your gender ever been a barrier when it comes to music? Sometimes it sort of felt like a barrier again because not as many people would talk to me or take me seriously and that came from directors too. I've been a sub a lot of my life and you know I've actually had times where I've been called into sub in an ensemble and they say, wow, I didn't know that someone could sight read like that on the trombone. You're so great. So and so has a family. He has kids. So we'll always call him first. I think I've been quite lucky in my life, generally. I have gotten recognized more than lots of women who are just as talented, if not more talented. And uh, even then, I just feel like there's a bit of a ceiling. In regards to people not wanting to recognize my talent and skill, I had one guy tell me, well, you're pretty good for a girl. And it's like, damn, that sucks because all these barriers are put up in front of you. You take one step forward, it's like two steps back. But. I like to preface that all of my interviews are done at my gym, Lions MMA, Vancouver. If you're interested in martial arts, I would definitely recommend checking them out. I was not paid to say this. Um, tell us your name and how long you've been training. My name is Haley and I've been training since September 2021, so like seven or eight months. My name is Jaya and I've been doing kickboxing for just over 10 years. I'm a personal trainer and I'm an instructor at Lions and Money. My name is Ragini and I'm from India and I moved here four years ago. Siobhan Young and I've been training five, six days a week for over a year now. My name is Lara and I've been training for about two and a half months. And what disciplines of martial arts do you practice? Just Jiu Jitsu. I do boxing, a little bit of Jiu Jitsu and then kickboxing and strength and conditioning. Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, kickboxing and Jiu Jitsu and then boxing once in a while. Nogi, Jiu Jitsu, and Muay Thai. Have you ever felt like your gender identification has posed as a barrier to your martial arts experience? 
Certainly, it started from even in childhood when I wanted to go into martial arts and you know I asked my parents but they were kind of like you know that's more for boys and they weren't really into it um, and then when I was 20 I went into it on my own. Came into a gym was definitely intimidated uh, being at that time I was the only girl there and definitely was like oh maybe this isn't for me. It's definitely a mental blocker. It's a male dominated industry and until we got names like you know the Ronda Rousey's of the world and you know the Misha Tates of the world it was very very male dominated you would never see a women's fight be the headliner fight you know there was women's only classes of course but it wasn't really a big thing for women definitely I think because it's such a male dominated sport even like the first time I walked in there was like only two girls in the class versus like eight guys so at first I was a little bit put off like why do no girls play this sport? Is it too aggressive? Are people not helpful enough or, or what it is? And, and sometimes even with the demos and stuff, I find that a lot of it is geared more towards a larger body rather than a smaller, shorter body. So sometimes it's a little bit difficult that way. It's uncomfortable to be in a room full of men wearing tight clothes and feeling like self-conscious like anyone would when you go to the gym. But then also I realized that even as a female, I can be strong, just as strong as all of the guys here. And out of all of the sports I've ever done, like I've played a lot of sports. And this one is the only one where I felt like I can actually compete with a guy on a similar level and come out on top and win. And I've never had that with any other sports. So yes, I do feel the discomforts of being female in a male dominant sport, but also no, it's exciting and I love it. For the most part, not so much as there's a huge female um, member base here in Lions, but there has been days where I might be the only girl female in class and, you know, a 120 pound girl with uh, males who are a lot larger, a lot stronger, can be quite intimidating. That's the main part, I feel. I come from a conservative culture, so initially when I started training, I didn't tell my family. And then once I started training, then I was like, Mom, I'm going for this and like kickboxing and jiu-jitsu and wrestling. And then my mom was like, why don't you do what normal girls do? So what is what normal girls do according to her? Like, I don't know. For me, this is normal. So I had to convince her that women can do things like, you know, you just have to let them, give them the opportunity and space. But for some reason, maybe because of the violence that is involved with it, people are trying to be protective. But they have to know that we also are strong and brave enough to face it. And once I started competing in Jiu Jitsu, I happened to send a video to my mom and she didn't talk to me for more than a month. And she was like, this is not the values that I raised you with harming someone else. Like, you want to attack someone else physically like that. This was a major challenge for me, but somehow I have been able to convince her, telling her that this is something that we definitely need to identify and push more women based on the gender for the fact that this gives you much more than what you can. You know, at least for my experience. Well, I'm getting all philosophical here. <laughs> And what do you have to say to any women out there who may be afraid of trying an activity that's largely male dominated? I would say honestly just go for it. Who cares what anyone thinks? Who cares how well you do? As long as it's fun and you're enjoying it, that's all that matters. It really doesn't matter how fast you are, how good you get, like how how much better you get. That all that doesn't matter as long as you're enjoying it and that's really what it's all about. In general, the fear is definitely in your head. And obviously there will be challenges. If you see most of the men in a room that you enter into and you want to purchase something, that shouldn't stop you. Just keep your eyes on the prize and go for it. Sometimes you just have to go for it. You just have to push through and think about how many other people you are positively impacting. It's not as intimidating as you may think it is. The hardest part is getting your foot in the door. But once you're here, it's very welcoming and warm. Just give it a try because you can do a lot more than you think you can. Be strong. Um, be confident in yourself. There's a lot that we can do and there's a lot that we can we can do, especially once we push ourselves. Um, I'll have people come in here and be like, I don't really want to do a girl's class. And that still happens to this day. That, that happens a lot. But you have to push yourself. You have to be confident. Give it a try. And then go from there because who knows what you can accomplish if you just give it a try. It can be really scary to try something new, whether it's male dominated or not. But the most important thing that I've learned from coming here is that all of the guys here are extremely friendly, extremely willing to help you. So I wouldn't let fear of not being strong enough or being in tight clothes and in a setting with guys. I wouldn't let any of that affect how you feel about coming to train because at the end of the day, you're coming to better yourself. I would say just do it. You know, sounds very cliche of me, but 
when you put your heart to something and you know like this is what you want to do keep doing like just keep going if i didn't believe in myself i wouldn't be where i am right now and it sucks sometimes sometimes you're gonna have the tears you're gonna have the times where you feel completely defeated but what you got you just keep going every single time that you kind of just keep pushing yourself you're gonna get better i think that if you're afraid you should know it's with good reason you know like your feelings are valid you do have two choices right and you can be afraid and leave it or you can be afraid and you push yourself to be part of it and we all have to decide for ourselves whether or not we can take that on just because you are lesser represented voice in your field doesn't mean you're ready to be an activist it doesn't mean you're ready to champion for everyone that looks like you so i'd say like, respect the fear um but know that you know for me when i have that fear about not feeling welcome somewhere it does turn into anger and i'm like Ugh. like why do you get to have that because you've made it crappy so if you have enough in you if you have enough resolve but if none of us ever jump in then those folks get to keep those places it's one of those difficult questions where you're like well there's probably a reason you're afraid and then you have to kind of prepare yourself because it's naive to say like, oh, it's not a big deal. You just have to get over your fears because sometimes you can walk into a situation and you're like, well, I know why there's no women here. Other times you can walk in and you can be like, oh, this is a place that I, I can actually make it seem accessible to more people. Girl boss interview. This part you have to edit it out because then I don't look cool. You have to make me look cool. <laughs>